Hello, everyone. Welcome to my session about Show Me the Potential Customer. I'm Leila. Uh, I came from New Zealand, and I uh, actually have some experience in SQL Server, and also I have some in BI and data warehouse design. Uh, also, I'm working in University of Auckland as a tutor. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the, what is the data mining and uh, also how the Microsoft implement the data mining for helping their customer to better you know, use and predict the, and also uh, provide a better view about their customer. Uh, I'm going through the, some different algorithms today and also I will show the, some uh, demos about that, how we use the data mining algorithm to do solve the real problem. Okay, so first start, I'm going to provide a very brief introduction to data mining stuff. Uh, you know that, so what's a, what's a data mining meaning? So the, uh, the aim of the data mining is to find a pattern in the data that exists, okay? So there's two uh, actually approach. One is to find a pattern and another one is actually to predict that's what happened to, uh, what's going to be happen according to the previous data sets. Uh, the, the main algorithm that is used for data mining is about nine algorithm that Microsoft use them. And most of them are a mathematical algorithm. That's if uh, it's very hard to understand if you just want to write them. So it's really a good way that Microsoft provide that for us and we can use them. Uh, we use the data mining for forecasting, for risk analysis, for uh, providing recommendation, and also for grouping, and also finding the sequence. So we can use the data mining algorithm in different areas, marketing and the rest. Uh, I'm going to start, I'm going to show you a video that's talking about the how to use the BI and data mining stuff for the marketing department and how it can help them to have a better uh, find the customers that they can fo focus on them and provide, uh, target them for their marketing. Mm -hmm. Back in the old days, advertisers had to speak to everybody to reach the few interested in their product. From the dairy case, Woolies are in strength, only $1.39. Smile at the 50 cent saving. Nice. The but today, companies can reach us directly with the right offer at the right time. Anyone can have a full head of hair again, guaranteed. So stop worrying about hair. Even if we don't know it yet. Right now, in Australia, some retailers automatically offer us personalised vouchers based on what we've just run through the checkout. 50% off TV props. But in America, it's gone way past that. Last year, Target sent a teenage girl vouchers for baby clothes and maternity wear, angering her father in the process. This is totally inappropriate to be sending these things out to children. That was until he discovered that his daughter was, in fact, knocked up. Target worked it out before Dad did by analysing the shopping records of women on their baby shower registry and noticing there are a whole bunch of products that women tend to buy when they're pregnant. So they came up with a pregnancy prediction score for other women buying the same items and even roughly guessed their due dates to send out perfectly timed baby bargains. 50% off nappies! Oh, Bethany! I'll see if we have any in stock. Companies can tell when you're about to move house, when your kids are going to graduate, when you're thinking about buying a new car. They can pretty much read our minds. Ooh, 20% off vasectomies. And in most cases, we've willingly handed our information over. Take loyalty programs, for example. They aren't about rewarding you. They're about spying on you. Would you like to join our Priceline Sister Club? Ooh, what does that involve? Well, you give us your name, address, date of birth, sex, phone number and email and we record every single purchase you make and share that information with third parties. Then we can buy even more information about you from third parties so we can sell you more stuff. And if you not only give us all that information but also spend $100 in store, we'll give you a voucher worth $3 which you will most certainly throw straight in the bin. Where do I sign? 
So uh, as you can see that they use the data, they use the previous data of the customer to predict what's happening in the future, to who is the potential customer. So there are uh, actually two types of the data mining analytics. The first one is using the descriptive. So they try to categorize customer based on the what's happened in the past. And also, based on the what's happened in the past, they try to predict what's going happening in the future. So same as the video that you see here. Uh, I'm going to have a look on the data mining life cycle that we have. As you know, the first step is to define a problem. There's a problem we want to see that who is going to buy the specific product, okay? So, and the next step is about the preparing data. Preparing data can be from different resources. Can be come from Facebook, from the shopping cart, from the existing database, from the every place. So kind of the ETL process also can be involved. So what we are going to actually preparing the data for the that one and gather the data, and then we have a exploring that data, so find the data mark that related to that place and uh, finding all of these things. And then is a place that we try to build our data mining model. We use the previous data to create our mining model. And definitely when you create a model, now is a step that you validate it, see that how it works, is it correct or not. And now you can use it and deploy it in different situations. So it's a kind of a life cycle that's proposed by uh, actually Microsoft One. I'm going to look at the deeply to the Microsoft solution to the data mining approach. Yeah, I'm using the traditional data set for the Microsoft that Adventure works to show you the things. So imagine that we are going to see that who is our potential customer. You, if you want to look at it, you should have some attributes, like for example, age. Uh, 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 are they have car at home or not? Number of the children, their yearly income, what's the distance between their home and their work? So there are lots of variables that help us to create a model. So we use these attributes as an input model and for creating our mining model algorithm. So here in this demo, I'm going for decision tree, neighbors, and clustering to show you how they help us to creating a mining model. And based on that, now we have a model that can help us to predict that what's going on in the next step. So we call it as a mining structure. Now, uh, we, have, uh, we always split our data into two parts. The first part, we call it train data. That means that we use it to create the model, to create and also to see that what's variable effect on buying the bike. And the another set of the data are going to use for validating the model. So two set of data, train set and test set. And we try to find that, okay, now our model is validate. Okay, uh, I'm going to have a very brief review on the what sort of algorithm we have. In Microsoft, in SSAS, uh, actually they provide nine algorithm. Okay, nine algorithm from the data mining approach that use in the uh, that comes from the mathematic concepts. So Microsoft implement these algorithm. The, the some of the parameters you can set some of the parameters in SSAS. But if you would like to change most of the algorithm, you, you write your own clustering algorithm and you want to use, then you should use the R and also Azure Machine Learning that's helped that in that way. So I'm going for the very brief description of these algorithm. The first one is decision tree. So it's try to split the decision. For example, you are going to buy your bike, so it says that the first parameter that's effect on buying the bike is age. So First, split the data based on the age, greater or less than 40. Then it's go to consider another attribute as number of the child at home. So you see that it's going to split data through the different uh, attributes. So this uh, decision tree both used for describe the data, as you can see, and also it's helped to provide the prediction based on the data. Uh, and also is accept both of the discrete and continuous. I will explain it in the demo that what's the difference between discrete data type and continuous one. Okay, uh, the next one is a clustering algorithm. 
clustering algorithm, the name is obvious that it's going to cluster the data based on some specification. It's gather the people, the data that are similar together in a one cluster. So it's mostly descriptive. It helps you to provide a good descriptive about the data. It's use the k-min algorithm that's based on the mathematical things. And, uh, but you can also use it for the prediction. Uh, the Microsoft Neighbors algorithm is also is another classifier algorithm that also used to find the attribute that affect on creating the prediction. So you can also look at this uh, association rules. That's a kind of the descriptive algorithm try to provide a rule. So for example, if the, your customer bought cheese and bread, definitely they go to buy the Olive. So it's a kind of the if and uh, if then algorithm that helps you to provide a set of rules that you can use in your knowledge base or the other. So it's really helpful for providing a descriptive analysis of your data. And uh, there are some, I just end up with a time series that is a just prediction the sales based, based on the what's trend that we have in the past is try to say that what's be going on. So is it just a brief overview? There are regression others that I'm not going to talk about them in this session. For now, I'm going to show you some real world uh, demos about the data mining, uh, how to use the data mining. The, uh, the solution, the, uh, the problem that we have is about that who is going to buy the bike. So we have uh, some specification of people like their gender, occupation, number of the car at home, their distance, and also the age group to find out that who is our potential customer. Okay, the first demo is about the, using the decision tree, clustering, and name base. So I'm going to the CSIS project. I'm using the analysis services. Here is a place that I'm identified the main source of the data that I'm going to use. So here I should identify. Oh, I just let the previous one to show you. So I'm using the data source of that's the data warehouse that's existing in my computer. That's adventure work. Go to the next step. And yeah we have uh, our data source. Now we are going to provide a data source view. We are not going to use all of the dimension and table that we have in that data source. So we are going to look at the, uh, the data that we have. Uh, here, because uh, we want two series of data. One, the data that's talking about the, our previous customer, the data about our previous customer, and also we want a set of data that talking about our future customer, the, their specification. I have two tables that help me. The first one is target mail, that is contained information about the customers that they already bought the bike. And the another one is a list of the customer that I think that they can be my potential customer. So I choose this set of the data and then okay, just change the name or leave it as it. Okay, so this is the two data source view that I have here. So the first one, talking about the existing customer, you can explore the data here. And you can see we have a field that's a binary that's uh, talking about the who is the bike buyer. So if they have the one, that means that they already bought the bike. Otherwise, the zero is standard, they are not going to buy, the, they didn't buy the bike. So is it historical data about that, who is our customer? They also have some information. There. And also, this is the data that we have about our potential customer, okay? So now the next step is to creating the mining structure. So if you remember from the cycle, we gather data, we create it. Now we are going to create a mining structure. So here, the, you can see here that we have about nine algorithms that help us to creating the mining model. For this demo, I first go to for decision 
tree algorithm. Okay? So we have two sets of data. It asks me about that which of these one is the case. You are going to train your model to which set of data. Okay? So here, as you can see, this one is the data that talking about the previous model, previous customer. I'm going to train my data based on this one. So I choose this one as a case, and I keep it one for further prediction. So I'm going to the next step. Okay. Here is a place that you identify uh, your prediction attribute, what's your input to your model. So here we are going to predict the bug buyer, who is the bug buyer. So in front of the predict, I tick the box. Also, I think that uh, there's, a, uh, there's a suggestion here that the Microsoft is provide that, okay, it's provide a list that it's think that age, number of the cars, total children can affect on buying the bike. So I can use this one, or you also can say that, okay, I think that age can affect the distance can affect on buying the bike, their ed ed uh, education, their occupation, their gender, uh, the martial status, and also number of the car that they have, number of children. Pardon? Oh, oh yes, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So also, maybe you also made some information just to describe that one. Okay. So um, yeah, that is it. Yeah. Thank you for mentioning that because it's really provided a problem if I run it. So go to the next step. So we have our inputs that can affect on buying the bike. Now we're talking about the what's their data type. So algorithm is a kind of the function. They accept some specific data type, OK? So for the first, we just want to detect that what's the actual data type of these uh, attributes. So as you can see, here we have different type of the attributes. One is the continuous one, like age, like, like a real income. Or some of them are discrete. For example, the gender is just female and male, so it's discrete. Some of them are actually cyclic, like they, uh, the weekdays or months. So they, you know, they change during the time. So, and also, we have a, another data type that name is discretized. That means that you provide it's, it's the algorithm that apply onto the continuous data. For example, apply onto the age and provide, instead of having a, about uh, 100 value from one year to 100 year, is try to categorize the data. For example, age range from 1 to 20, 20 to 40. So it's provide a range. So when you choose the algorithm, when you choose, uh, choose the sum of the attribute to be discretized, that means that you are going to change it from the continuous one to the discrete. So I'm just leave it here. I will change it later in the solution. Okay. Uh, here is a place that talking about the percentage of the data for testing. You remember in the picture, in the, in the first picture, I'm talking about that we divide the data, half for training, half for test. This is a place that you identify how much, how much percentage of data should use for training. So I said that, okay, divide the data to the 30%. 30% should be used for training the data. And also, you can identify number of cases that I'm just ignore it here. Take the allo uh, drill allo true, so I will explain. Also, you will sh see that why we use this one. Okay. So this is our mining structure. If you face a problem in the first step to identify the attribute, for example, the type or the rest, you can change it here. Uh, I'm going to change the age to the discretize, and I'm going to set that. I want to classify. I want to classify age to the five part. So from one to uh, one hundred, it's about five age range. So from one to twenty-five, twenty-five to fifty, and the rest. Okay. And also for the yearly income, also the same. 
we change it to the discretize and we set five. Why we do that? Because uh, when there's a kind of, when you are going to run this algorithm, if it's just a continuous one, the mining model try to focus on a specific just one, for example, for the age 20. So it's become, it's not that much accurate, the result. But when you say that's the age range, so it's probably get that age range and just focus on that one. So it's better for, um, for some attributes it's to be discretized. Okay, now we have, so here you can see our mining model and our mining structure. After that, we create our mining structure. Now we can go through the mining model. For the start, we have a mining model that's based on the decision tree. You can also create the other mining model based on that structure. So here I'm using the clustering one. So I'm going to create an algorithm as a clustering. Also, I'm going to create another one for uh, naive base. So you can create number of mining model here. So as long as you create once, the other also easy. So what, what's the point of creating this much of the model? Uh, for different data sets, they have different accuracy, okay? So for example, one algorithm, uh, for example, decision tree uh, works well in some set of data, whilst the clustering works in another. So it's really good that we run the algorithm, we create different type of algorithm, and run them to see that which one is more accurate, which one, which one can better predict the, what's going on. So here I'm create three ones, and I just proceed to see that what's the result. Okay. Hopefully no errors. So, okay. So now we go to the third tab. That is 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 about the mining model viewer. It's a place that you can see, you can have a better dis uh, description about what's going on in your data. Okay, I'm just going to show you. Here is a place that you can go through the different mining model. For the start, I'm just going to see the decision tree one. So as you can see, the, here we have a background. You remember in the data that we have bike buyers, that zero stand for people who buy the bike, uh, sorry, one stand for the people who buy the bike, and zero stand for the people who are not going to buy the bike. So here I'm going, I'm interested to see that uh, which type of the people are going to buy the bike or already bought the bike. So look at here, you see that there's different shading here. So uh, the first attribute that affect on the buying the bike is number of the cars that people have there at home, okay? So you see that it's come as a first attribute. The second one is the age. So the first attribute is the number of the car, the second age, the third one, maybe number of the children they have at home. So let's try to, uh, to prioritize which attribute has more effective. Uh, the, also, you can see another difference between these shapes. That's, a, that's a sh their shading. For example, for the people who are going to buy the bike, you see that the num uh, people who are just, they do not have any car, uh, the the possibility, the likely of these people are very high to buy the bike. So if I'm putting my mouse over here, you see that about uh, 1,800 something are going to buy the bike, and about uh, 1,000 are not going to bike. So also if you're going to the lighter one, that's the people who owned about two cars, you see that, that the percentage for the people exactly for the people who are going to, not going to buy the bike is much higher. I'm going to look at this one at the, for the people who they do not have the bike. The next step, we are going to uh, separate them based on the age range. So you see that the dark shade is a stand for the people who are most likely to buy the bike. So the people who's less than 47. So, we can say that, okay, people who do not have bike, 
less than 47, and their salary is great, uh, greater than $71,000 are going to buy the bike. So it's really, you can see that you can provide a description about what's in going on in your data. Another tab is a dependency network that you can uh, have an idea about the attribute that have effect on buying the bike. So number of the car that the people have is the first attribute. You see that in the second stage is age, and you can go further and you see the rest. Okay, so it's all also you can increase the level, so you can change the level here to see the other attribute. Okay, this is uh, all about the decision tree. We are going to have a look at clustering algorithm very briefly. Clustering algorithm, as you remember, try to classify people according to attribute that they are shared, they are in common. Here we are going to look at the people that, look at the clusters that the people that are there are most likely to buy the bike. According to the previous rule, you see that the cluster six is, a, is the darkest one. So you see that 76% of people of there are going to buy the bike. So I said, okay, this cluster is a located people that I can provide uh, advertisement on them. And also, if you look at the cluster eight, I think so, yeah, you see that just 25%. So I'm not going to focus on them. I'm going just going to provide a, uh, provide a actually marketing on cluster six people. Uh, you can have another look on clustering algorithm. You can look at the, uh, analyze them. So we have about 10 cluster here. You remember that cluster six is about the people who are going to buy the bike. So you can also compare it with the rest of the cluster. So for example, uh, for the bike buyer, you see that here, uh, people is, you know, it shows the percentage of how they vary regard the different attributes. For example, number of the car that they have, their English education. So it's provide a really cool uh, explanation of this. Also, you can have a look on each cluster about the value that they have. And you can see that, okay, for example, for cluster one, what's the yearly income and the rest. There is a possibility that you can just copy entire program and, for example, paste it in a specific. So, for example, I just want to show it here. So you can already copy and paste all of these diagrams in your reports here. Okay, and the last one is a nave base. Nave base is the description is, is a combination of the clustering algorithm and decision tree. So here also you can see that it provides explanation about the which attribute has effect on buying the bike. And yeah, you can see this and also it provides a good explanation of the people who are going to buy the bike or not. So for example, you see that uh, you can compare different attributes here. For example, the uh, number of the car that they have and the rest, you can have a good explanation of them. The same as the clustering one. Okay, so now we have our, uh, we created our mining models. We create three mining models. Now is a step to validate them, to see that which one is more accurate. So here I'm said that the prediction value is one, and I want to look at the which one is more accurate. So the green one stands for decision tree, the purple one clustering, and, oh sorry, the, the yellow one naive base, and the purple one is clustering. We have two other line here, the red, and the blue one. The red one is the ideal chart. That means that the ideal solution. And the blue one is a stand for the worst one. As you can see, decision tree is more close to the ideal one for these data sets. It's, mean, it's not that always the uh, decision tree works well. No, for this type of the data, for this type of the uh, attribute that we have, decision tree works well. Maybe in different data sets, we have different solutions. We have different mining model. So 
So we use this one uh, decision tree for prediction. Now we are going to the last step of prediction that is about the uh, using the decision tree to predict that who is our customer, okay? So you remember that we have two set of data. We use the target model just for uh, creating the model. And now is a place that we use the, another set of the data that contain information about our new customer, about our potential customer here. So here is a place that we use our mining model, and here is a place that we put our data about the, our potential customer. Also, it's good to modify the connections because they are kind of the joint between them. Uh, um, for example, the education field should be matched, the uh, occupation field also, okay? Now, now I'm going to write a prediction function. Here is a list of the source that we have here. You see that our mining model, that decision tree, our data, and also we have the function that help us to do the prediction. I'm using the prediction function category, and because I'm going to see that who is going to buy the bike, so I'm using the predict probability function field here. Definitely, I'm going to use the bike buyer field to see that who is going to buy the bike, so I'm just drag it here, and I set that one because I just want to see who is going to buy the bike. If, if I want just to see that who is not, I should use the zero. And also I put some uh, other attribute here, like, for example, first name from the prospective bike buyer, and last name, yeah, just this. And I'm going to look at the result. Okay, uh, before that is also, oops. It's good to provide, for example, the name, proper name. Okay, so you see that it provides the probability above, about the different people who are going to buy the bike. For example, Adam, for about 40% are going to buy the bike. Okay, but it's not really nice design. We want some sorted one. We want to see that who is the most, then, and also some other things. There is a a possibility to write your own code. That's using the DMX language to do that. So I'm going to the query part. So you can see here that the DMX languages for, uh, for running the prediction. So the, all of these steps that I'm done, the code is here. I'm going to set that I want the people who are most likely to buy the, uh, to buy the bike with possibility of, uh, so where is greater than, for example, 60%. And also I want to order by descending them. So I'm just going to see the result. So yeah, here is it. So you see that the people who are going to buy the bike is ordered that. So you see the carry rows are they are more likely to buy the bike, and you can see the rest. The problem is here, when you, when you go through the query, when you want to back to the design, it says that, hey, you, all of things that you write in DMX will be gone, so you will be back to the traditional state. So, yeah, you can change your query, you can add more than anything there. Uh, I'm going to, sh oops, sorry. Okay, talking about the DMX, I just want to have an idea about that, what is this. So if you look at here, it says that this is the select that we use here. Uh, also, you can create a mining model. This is a mining model that I'm used to create a framework for trees recommendation system. I'm going to predict, I'm going to provide a recommendation for customers about, um, about their, uh, this is for, yeah, travel budget. I'm going to predict, based on the previous data, how much they should bring with yourself during the travel. 
So this is the DMX code. You can see that uh, I provide the model, uh, the name. I provide all of the inputs. And because I want to check that uh, the how much they spend, so I in, in front of the spend, I put predict. And I just using the using Microsoft decision tree. So it's a place that you said that, hey, I'm going to use these algorithm. Another, uh, there's a good possibility of the DMX that you can use it in the .NET and also with others. So you can see that I create a mo data mining model that uh, this model can use different model types. So I can instantiate it with uh, decision tree, neighbors, and the rest. And also, in a one model, I'm going to predict in sometimes duration and sometimes the money that the traveler are going to spend. So you see that it's really cool. You can integrate it. I use the, uh, I use the library as add-on adapter to connect to the SSAS and just write the code into the .NET. So it's really helpful. It really can be helpful for your software. OK? So it's all about these things. I'm going to, any questions so far? Yes? OK, yes. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's correct. That the viewer can be open also in the .NET and also, yeah, as uh, says that, yeah, that, that's correct, that we can use it in the different, in the SSIS viewer to create the model there. So, yeah, so it's just about these things. I'm going to talk about the another one, if there is no question. Okay, so proceed to the uh, another mining model and create a new project. I'm going to talk about the uh, actually market basket analysis. Is that if you know it's creating the rule for uh, for customers? So you know that, for example, your customer, some of your customer buy milk, bread, and the rest, and you want to predict that what's their next step if they build, uh, if if they bought milk and bread are they going to buy the egg as well or not so we are going to analyze a market basket analysis to do that uh here i'm use the i'm create another model Okay, creating the data source. I'm going very fast for this, using this one. And the view. Okay. For this step, uh, we are going to use a, actually two sets of the data. We need, first of all, the list of the customer that we have. And beside that, we need the list of the item that they already so it's a kind of the one-to-many relationship between them. So we have a main table and a actually child one that contains the information about the orders of the customer. So we go further and create this one. You can look at the data here, uh, explore the data, and see that there is a table that contains information about the customer. And this one is a table that contains information about the each customer order. So for example, for this order, we have about four hours. So this customer come to the, to the store and buy four items together. OK? So we should, because the kind of the one-to-many relationship, we should connect these two together. So they are connected through the order number. So now we have our data source. We are going to create a new mining structure. We're using the associative rules. And OK, this is a place. Here is a, some difference from the previous one. Uh, here we have the actually, uh, some of them are the nested one. So if you look at here, the uh, sequence line in the nested one, and the main case is our the sequence order that contain information about our 
customer. And also here, we just want the order number as a, as a key. And here, we just choose the model for predict and input. What's the model? Because we are going to predict what's the next step, which, which product customers are going to buy, OK? So that wise that we should use the model or anything. Because if you look at the data, we have a model here. So we are going to predict that in the basket of the customer, what's the next product model? So that's OK. We are not going to predict anything. So just we are going to have a rule to create some rules. So we do not need the for that one. And OK. So now we have our mining model for associated rules. Going just to run it. OK. So it takes time, and yep. Now we have our rules. I'm just check it that to just show the name. So you see that the first rule talking about that people who are buying the touring tire and water bottle, they definitely are going to buy the touring tire tube. So it's a kind of the rule with the probability of the one and the importance of the one. I will talk about the what's the importance. So you can see that different probability here, definitely some rules are less probable to do so. You see that the people who buy the hydration bag, they are le for 40%, they are going to buy the water bottle. So, okay, so what's the importance of having the importance? So you said that, uh, this rule with probability of one can be happened, but 100% you are going to buy the water bottle. Why we need the importance? So sometimes uh, in the basket of the customers, they every customer have a bottle of water. It's not that much important, you know. It's, it's repeated data. It's not that much important for our business. Okay. So what we have to do, we uh, there is a there is a formula that's using the uh, some uh, some formula about the uh, what's happened the number of the cases that we are here and also here to calculate the importance of the these rules. So the combination of the probability and importance are matter. So for example, this rule is a good one because both the importance and the probability is high. But for example, for the uh, for example, this one, or for example, this one, you see that the probability is 82%, but the importance is 44%. So it's not that much useful for us. The last thing about the associative rule, you can see that you can have a view about that, what sort of item sets that we have in each. So for example, in our data, we have about 6,000 about that uh, sport things, we have about uh, 4,000 water bottle, and also it has to provide the statistic data about what's happening on. And the last charts of this shows the, for example, it says that if you like, for the, for the, um, for the product model Sport 100, these, uh, if the customer bought these things, they definitely are going to buy this one. So if the customer buy touring 1,000, this one, and this four, they definitely go to buy this one. And this also is another showing that if you, uh, this uh, model is are going to predict the sport, sport 1000. So it's provided a good explanation about the effectiveness in the uh, effect of the each cost, uh, each product on each other. Or in this example, you can see that there is a bi-direction between the two models. So if they are buying the touring tire, they are going to buy the touring tire tube or vice versa. So yeah, it's all about that. So you see that it's, uh, these rules can help us to provide a better explanation on what our customer are going to buy. 
Okay, so, so far I'm talking about the data mining. I'm showing you the solutions about there. And also we go through the data mining algorithm. And for the more study, you can go through this tutorial on MSTM and also there are some useful things. And I should add it, if you, if you are going interested in to change the algorithm, using the R and uh, machine agile learn learning is really helpful for that purpose. But if you just want to work with, a, uh, actually with, with this predefined uh, mining model is enough. You also, if you come here, there is a possibility that you can change some of the parameters here. But it's not that much flexible, you know? So it's just for use, you know? If you want to ch use your algorithm using R, with a combination of the uh, machine learning, Azure machine learning is really helpful for you. But this one is very easy to use in the work. And yep, just about this. Any question, if you have any question, you can contact me and also, yeah, any question? Okay, yes. Uh, with a tourist. Yeah, this one? Links, okay. Oh, yes, yes. Sorry. This one? Yep. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you for attending the session. Thank you. Have a good day.